Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we're going to talk more about records, our structs in C++, but we're going to talk about how to use them with functions, which is really important. You don't want to just write all your code in main. You want to be able to split it up into manageable um, sub problems that you can then reuse. And so here we've got our code, same as last time where we left off in the previous video. Uh, we've got our struct called student with these uh, three different members that are stored in it. And uh, we've got in a main, we've got our two struct variables of student and uh, we do some manipulation. So here we're setting the first one here. We're getting the second one from the user. I'm going to actually comment this one out um, and we'll just get the set the second student uh, to be same as the first student. Remember, we can do that aggregate operation. And then here we're doing a comparison between uh, the two students and outputting that they're the same. So this should now be happen. This uh, statement should be true. And then we're outputting um, the two students uh, information. And uh, so note there's some potential here for functions. Um, obviously here these two statements are nearly identical. So we've got a lot of duplicate code for displaying a student. It would make sense to create a function that displays one student and then we can um, call the function twice rather than repeating all this code here, um, make it much more easy to maintain. And so let's do that. Let's create a function that accepts a student and displays that student. Um, so first we'll start out with a function prototypes comment, and then we'll create our function prototype. Um, so this is going to display the student's information. We can call it print and we can pass it a student. That's the type. And, uh, this is the name. So don't get confused here. Um, this is the type, so it doesn't hold anything. It's just like int or double, uh, except it's our structured type. And then here is the name of our parameter. So this is the formal name we're giving it. Um, now, like other structured types, um, so when we have uh, simple or primitive types, um, it makes sense to pass them pass by value, um, but or pass by reference if you want to make a change. But with structured types like arrays and strings, it makes sense to pass them as references. Now with structs, we can actually pass them by reference or pass by value. This is pass by value, uh, which is inefficient because we're duplicating, uh, we're creating a copy of the student. And we're also, uh, so we're using the extra memory to store the copy and we're spending the time making the copy. And so instead we'll pass it by reference, uh, always pass your structs by reference. And um, if you don't modify the struct in the function, we don't want print here to modify our student. We want it to just use the information in our student struct. And so if that's the case, make it const. So here we have a const reference. So I'm going to take this prototype, go down below main, and we'll go ahead and implement it. So here is our function definition. And I'll just take this line of code here that displays one of the uh, structs and we'll use that here. Now our pro formal parameter is stud and so we'll need that to match here. So we'll change these from stud2 to just stud. And that's it for our print function. That should uh, display a student. Now we can replace our code here to use our print function. So I'm gonna say print and pass it stud1 and then print and pass it stud2. So when we get to this line of code here, it's actually gonna jump down to our print function and it's gonna output stud1, referring to it in this function as stud because that's the name of our formal parameter. And then when we call this, it's gonna use stud to output stud2's information here. Um, so that's um, much simpler code here. And if we had any number of students, we could um, output them with a very simple method here. And then if we want to display, change how it's displayed here, we could just change it once here and it would display how all our students, um, all our students in that different way there. So let's make sure this works. So let's go back to the command line, compile it, call records, records, and uh, you can see it outputs James Kirk twice because uh, that's what we're getting. Um, that's what our initializing our values to. So here's our first one and here's our second one. Another cool thing that I should point out is uh, when you create a student or a structure, there's a, a shorthand way of initializing it too. So we could um, use the curly braces list form of initialization as well. And so here, just like with arrays, we could write uh, James and then comma Kirk and then our GPA. We want to um, follow the same order they're declared in. So here, first name first, then last name, then GPA. So that's the order they need to be in here. Um, and that's a shorthand way of doing this line here. So we have an aggregate initialization too, if we do it uh, when we declare the variable. Um, and then we could write this line 
more succinctly here too. Um, so let's compile it, make sure that still works. And you can see, sure enough, we get James Kirk twice. Um, so that's just a bonus there. So here we've got a function that we're using where its students are uh, the parameter. Now let's create another uh, function that does this, that it uh, gets the input from the user. Um, so this code right here, and um, then gives us that value. And we could do this two different ways. We could return a struct. So a structs can be returned from a function or they can be obviously parameters. So we'll do it both ways. Um, so here we're going to first create a function that gets uh, the user's information or gets the student's information from the user. And we'll create it with a void function called uh, get student. And we'll pass it here, a student that we're going to set the values of. And this is not passed by reference because this time we're going to modify this student and we want that change to make it to our calling function. So we'll go down here um, and here's our definition. I'm just going to take this code straight from main that we created, put in now our nice modular function here. And here we're going to have to refer to it as stud because that's the name of our, our parameter here. Make sure those match. Um, and that's it for uh, our new function to um, set the values of a student. So now um, instead of maybe saying stud2 to be uh, the same, we'll call our function here and pass it stud2 and then let the input from the user set that. So let's go ahead, compile it and run it. So here we can pick any name and uh, any last name and give Ahura 4.0 and you can see it outputs uh, 4.0. Here's a good opportunity. So here this does outputs just four. Let's update our code so it outputs always one decimal place. Um, so I could uh, do it anywhere, but I'm just going to do it in main here. Um, see out um, set precision to be one and fixed. This will make sure that it's always one decimal place, uh, one digit after the decimal place. And we need to include IOMANIP if we use uh, set precision. IOMANIP. Um, so let's go ahead and see how that works now. So if compile it and run it. I should be able to say, um, let's do the same input as before. And uh, just a 4.0, and sure enough, it outputs 4.0. And if I do it again, and I output just four, it still outputs 4.0. So we're doing that precision there. Um, so that's pretty handy. Uh, one simple change. Um, now, I mentioned that you can actually return structs from a function. This is pretty cool. You can't do that with arrays. Let's create another function that does exactly the same thing, except we're going to set it up like this. It's going to return a student. Pretty cool, right? Uh, so get student here. And then we don't need any parameters here because we're going to return the value. Um, so when we create this function, um, instead of calling get student like this, uh, we'll call it like this. We'll say, we'll use stud1 here. Uh, get student. And so it'll get the student from the um, user and then it'll set it to be stud1 um, and get output. So let's define that function. So here, what we'll have to do is create a student inside this function, student. And then at the end, we're going to return that student. In the middle, we're going to get the user's input. So we could do that by copying and pasting this code here. Um, and then that would work just fine. Um, and so instead of doing all this copy and pasting, uh, what I'm going to do is take advantage of this function here, uh, which does the pass by reference. And you could do you could do it either way. Uh, put this code in this function and then use the other function uh, or vice versa. But here we'll just pass it the stud. Um, so that'll work just as well. And then we don't have all that duplicated code. Uh, so let's make sure this compiles and runs. Compiles. And then here we're going to be asked for two different users information because we're calling um, get uh, user, get student twice. Um, and so first time with our, our new function, the second time with the previous function. So here we could say uh, Leonard McCoy and then GPA of 4.0 or yeah, 4.0. And then we could say uh, Christine Chapel also 4.0 and you can see we get the output 
for those two uh, right here. So it's working. So pretty cool. We can actually return a student and that's because we can do assignment or that aggregate operation. And so we can make copies of values. And uh, that also means we can do pass by value and pass by reference parameters of our structure type. Um, and so we did that all with this example structure for a student. Um, I hope this video was useful. Um, I think it's good example code. Obviously, you could create different structs with different pieces of information. Um, definitely stay tuned. Watch the next video where we're talking about how to use structs with arrays um, and how to have arrays of structs and structs with arrays in them. So definitely check in for that. Thanks, guys.